Hi there, I'm Dan Conway, and today we're going to have a look at the new Furuno Time Zero Touch product. As you can see, the product looks really sleek and modern with this black finish to it, and very, very few buttons down this side here, and a really bright, clear display. This is Furuno's first touchscreen product, and it really is very inviting if you just want to reach out and touch it. This is the fully zoomed out view, and one of the quickest ways to zoom in is with the rotate key, one quick twist, straight back in there, and the chart's already there before we even finish twisting the key. As this is a touchscreen product, we can drag our finger across the screen and move it in any direction we like. We can get a view of any part of the chart we'd like to see. And we can also pinch to zoom. This is a unique feature. Only the Time Zero Touch can do this. So let's have a look at some of these multi-touch gestures that Freeman has built into this Time Zero Touch. The first one is, as we've shown before, the, time, the pinch to zoom. The next one we've got is orientation switching. So I've just touched the boat there, spun it around, We've now gone into head up mode. Again, if I touch the boat, that's right again, back into north up mode. A really quick way of switching modes. Another thing Furuno is famous for is its 3D native environment. This is even easier on Time Zero Touch. We just in Port Harbour here, by drag two fingers down the screen, I've gone into 3D mode. And by maintaining two things on the screen, and moving them around, and pan around to get a really good view of where I'm going and what might be ahead of me. Another really nice feature of Time Zero Touch is the ability to program your own custom gestures. In this unit here, I've got it set up to go to my main menu. So I simply double tap the screen, and I've got to my main menu really quickly and easily with that and press any of the buttons that are available on you. Okay, I've now changed my custom gestures to be a man overboard. This is a really quick way of accessing an emergency procedure. Double tap the screen, straight away, zooms me in, puts a man overboard, alerts me, all the units will be alarming a really safe way of operating on board. A real benefit of touchscreen products is the ease of which you can input go-to, waypoints and routes. What I'm going to show you here is how easy it is to put in a new go-to. Touch the screen, select go-to, and there we have an active go-to, straight away, really quickly. Okay, so we've now got our go-to active on our screen, but I've decided I don't want to go there anymore, so I'm going to cancel it. I'll tap my go-to line, I click stop now, and that's it, it's cancelled, it's gone. Okay, now I'm going to go through a few of the points that we can uh, add on to our time, time zero touch screen. I'll touch my screen, I'll click new point. Here's my new waypoint. Red has got a little star on it. Uh, to add another one, simply again, touch my screen, I've got a new point. If I put it in slightly the incorrect position, I can go in and I can move it around. So I've now entered the move mode. I can touch my screen anywhere and it will move that waypoint for me. Alternatively, I can drag my screen around and move it further in back. Okay, so we've got our points in here. I've done a few too many though. I'm going to undo and delete them. So I just press the undo button and they start disappearing. I can keep undoing. If I undo too many undos, I can redo them. Click the other button and they start reappearing. It's a really cool, easy to use feature. One of the key functions of a chart plot here is a routing. On time zero touch, we've made it as easy as possible to input your routes. I'm just going to show you a quick route here. I'm going to touch my screen at my start point and I'm going to select my new route button there. It's got a little flag to indicate where I'm going to start from. And then I'm going to touch my screen wherever I want my waypoints to go. I can still zoom in and pan around to get my points in exactly the right position. Once I've finished, I simply press my end route button. It zooms out to show me the whole route. I've got the ability to rename it or save it. So I'm going to rename this one Dan. Really big on-screen keyboard. Save my route, and there it is there. And then if I want to activate it on my autopilot, I touch my route, and I click activate. And then we have an activated route, really easy. Okay, so I'm just gonna edit my route here. And uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is move point three there, because I don't really like that there. So I'm just gonna touch that route, and the little move button comes up, and I can move it around. I can just touch the screen anywhere I like, and it'll move it, or I can drag it around. So we're going to put that in there, and then confirm that move with the end move button. Another really great feature is the ability to edit active routes. At the moment this is a passive route, if I touch it and click activate, it's now an active route. This means my autopilot will be steering towards it, so I'll give me my course to steer for that next waypoint there. Whilst we're off activated, I can go in and still edit my route. So I simply touch on a point that I want to move, click the move button, Move it around the screen, drag it around, and end that move. 
All whilst it's still activated, I'm still steering towards our waypoints. Okay, now we've got our activated route. We'll have a look at it in 3D. Okay, so we can just straight down the screen. And then turn around so that I can see my route. And it there is in distance. Okay, I've just moved the chart over here to Paul Harbour. And what I'm going to show you is one of our overlays that we've got. It's called the depth shading overlay. And when I touch my screen, scroll down the menu, and click on depth. Close my screen in for me, showing me where the shallow areas are and also where the deep areas are. You can set this up to the draft of your vessel so the blue areas are safe to travel for your particular boat and the red areas are where you should really stop. Another overlay available on the Time Zero Touch is the satellite photography overlay. So we touch my screen again, click on overlay and select that photos. Here they are coming in there, you can see how quick this is loading and then the detail level that is available is quite frankly astonishing. There we are. You can get a really clear view of where you might be, where you might be going, and what landmarks might be around you at the time. The final overlay I'm going to show you today is a radar overlay. This really enhances your situational awareness. There we are. There's our radar image being pulled into the plotter screen directly, and we can still pan around and have a look at that. And we can zoom in and have a closer look at the land, any marks that might be out to out there, and also any vessels that might be in our path. Another really nice feature of the Time Zero Touch is these data boxes down the side here. You click them and open them up. What we've got is a customizable display to show you exactly what information you want to see when you want to see it. So we've got three of the boxes available here. So we've displaying position here, go to information, uh, and the last one here is the radar. You can edit our radar settings, our rain, our sea, and our game, direct from the unit without having to swap to the radar screen. Okay, we're going to quickly show you the uh, weather information that's unique to Time Zero Touch. The information itself comes down via Wi-Fi, because it's got a built-in Wi-Fi router at the back. So, press my main menu screen, and go to weather. The service is completely free. You sign up to however however much information you like, you can download them as regularly as you like, and you can get 16 days forecast in advance. Okay, so we've changed the weather screen here. We've got our plot display. We've also got the timeline across the bottom. The timeline allows us to look forward into the future, to give us a real forward-looking future forecast of what the weather might be like, where you're heading. So at the moment we've got no details on there. What I'm going to do is add on some layers so we can see what data we want to, we want to look at. So the first thing we want to look at is some pressure. So I touch my screen, and I go to my weather data, and what we'd like to see, we'd like to see some weather. So there's some pressure. We've got our pressure bars pop up instantly there for us. And um, the other thing that might be useful for us would be, I don't know, maybe air temperature. We'll put on some air temperature there. It's coloured in my screen for me, showing me where it's hot and where it's cold. This then allows me to press my play button and I can replay the weather file directly on top of my chart plotter. So here we are, the, the pressure bars are changing, the air temperature is also changing as we're going along. I can pause at any moment and see the weather at a particular point by pressing the screen. And it gives me detailed information about exactly what the weather is like at that exact point. Okay, we've had a look at the air temperature and the pressure here, but that's not always that useful. I want to see some other things. So the first thing we're going to look at is some cloud coverage. Go onto my list, select cloud. So here we've got some big menacing clouds over the UK at the moment. And uh, also I'd like to have a look at the wind, the wind strength. So go onto here, we've got the wind there. So we've now got the wind feathers, we've got the cloud coverage, and we've got our pressure bars. And again, I can press my play button and get a forecast over the top of my bottom. So we've had a look at cloud coverage, now I'm going to look at the rain coverage. So I'm going to use my roto key to do this this time. So I touch the roto key, select weather data, and go down and select rain. Even whilst the, the animation is active, you can change over and look at any details that I like which are available. The data that's available is enormously extensive to the point that we can even have a look at plankton blooms out in the ocean. Another feature of the built-in Wi-Fi is the ability to connect in iOS devices. So here we have here an iPad, an iPhone, and my TZ Touch. These are all linked in together, talking to this unit via the built-in Wi-Fi. A really amazing feature. And as we can see, we've got two different modes. We've got this one here, which is reading me out. Digital data, much like an instrument. And I can pan through those, and have a look at the different information that's available currently on my network. The other app that we've got here is the Full Controller app, 
This is literally full control. You can do everything you can do on your device straight from your iPad. So what we're going to do is show you each app individually. Uh, both these apps are available currently on the App Store and they're both free. So why not download them and have a look for yourself? Okay, this is the Remote Viewer app. This allows me to view the data that's available on my network. It also allows me to view my fish finder. To start with, we're going to have a look at the data. Click on the data tab. We've got some presets already configured for us, but I can also create my own. Uh, for today, we're going to have a look at our navigation data, I think. So here we go. We've got four screens independently there. If they're too small, I can double click them and make them larger and then pan through them nice and easily. With all the information getting filtered in from the TZT unit. Okay, the other feature of this uh, app is the ability to pull in your fish finder. So you can have three people looking at your fish finder simultaneously. The other feature is you can go backwards through history and find out what you might have missed as you've gone past. It's a really cool little feature which can be really handy if you're on the back of your boat looking for some fish. Okay, so you've seen the remote viewer app. Now we're going to have a look at the full remote app. So, on my iPad screen here, I click on the remote app, pops up a direct picture of what's on my TZT screen. This is linked via Wi-Fi, and it's not just a one-way link. I've got full control over this, straight from my iPad. So I don't have to be in front of my unit to have full control over my nav gear. Uh, the other features that we've got available to us are things like our pinch to zoom. A really cool little feature that you can have anywhere in your, in your boat, just in your hand. So we showed you earlier the routing features of Type Zero Touch. What we're gonna do is show you again, but all from the iPad. Okay, so here we go. I'm gonna put in a new route directly from my iPad. So I'm going to touch my screen in my start position and click on new route. I get my little start flag and then I can go around, touch my screen in all the points where I want my waypoints. Once I've got my waypoints in there and they're correct, I'm happy with them, I click my end route button and save my route. So we've got a full route plugged in there straight from my iPad. But not only that, I can then activate it by touching my route and clicking activate. So without ever touching my to touch unit, I've activated my route. Another great use of the app is the ability to swap over and have a look at different information. For example, we can go and have a check on our weather straight from our iPad. So I select my weather page, and as soon as it loads up, I've got a full weather forecast straight on my iPad. So press play and, and initiate that animation. What we're looking at here is wave heights, pressure, and wind. It's a really cool little thing that you can do in the evenings planning your next day's itinerary. Okay, that's it. We've introduced the Time Zero Touch. I hope you've enjoyed our presentation today. If you'd like any more information, please feel free to give me a call at Bruno anytime.